Hi everyone, Teddy Baldessar with teddybaldessar.com. Today we're looking at one of my personal favorite watches from a brand that I really do love with Nomos with their Zurich edition. So in this video, we'll do a deep dive of this timepiece, how it works, uh, what really is the story behind it. And then in addition to that, at the end, kind of put out some points of just consideration before buying. At any point throughout this video, you wanna learn more or purchase this watch, link in the description down below to teddybaldessar.com. Also a place where you can actually book a consultation with one of our watch specialists as well will be in the top right corner. Just pick a time that works best for you if you are interested in this timepiece. But guys, let's jump into the video. Take a closer look at this watch. So over the past decade, Nomos has worked hard to establish itself as one of the great value brands in the entire watch world. The small independent Maison from Glasuto, Germany has carved out a niche focusing on design minimalism, moderate sizing options, and thoughtful in-house movement development, all at very attractive prices. While being mostly known for its simple three-hand references such as the Club, the Orion, the Tangente, yet Nomos also produces some upmarket in-house complications that are great value as well, such as the model we're going to be looking at today, the Zurich World Timer. The Zurich World Timer is a fantastic expression of Nomos' approach to design while also incorporating some creativity in its function and use case with its movement. So we'll get into the details of that. But the Zurich World Timer comes in with only one size at 40 millimeters in diameter, 10.9 millimeters thick, and also coming with a lug to lug distance of 49 millimeters. At this size, it really hits a sweet spot of feeling kind of timelessly nomos, but substantial enough that you recognize you're wearing something special from the brand. Now, the long angular lugs are commonplace among nomos models. This one is going to kind of fit the architecture and silhouette of the nomos Orion a little bit longer in terms of its extension out and that will allow this watch to wear pretty true to the 40 millimeters in terms of its case size so just kind of keep in mind that a good portion of that top to bottom length is going to be from these lugs held between the lugs is 20 millimeters with the lug width and it also comes with an excellent cordovan leather strap that attaches to a steel sign pin buckle now i have owned these nomo straps for quite some time in my other watches that i have owned from the brand and these wear in incredibly well over the years when they first are coming from the factory going to have a nice glossy style texture with that cordovan but will just age really nicely over time the stainless steel case is going to come in high polish across the lugs the side of the case as well as around the very thin bezel making way to more of the dial here so there is quite a bit of different things happening with both the dial as well as just the activity of side pushers so let's first just kind of get a lay of the land of what is happening on the dial and then work backwards just, just kind of talk about how this watch works looking within the slightly domed sapphire crystal for the the dial the first thing you'll likely notice about the Zurich World Timer is the layout and construction it's the busiest of all Nomos dials for the most part and it may not necessarily exhibit all the traditional design DNA you might be accustomed to with this brand but don't let that fool you into thinking the watch is difficult to read or wear on a daily basis. In fact, the dial design offers the opposite of that feeling with a wonderful spacing and terrific font choice, and the dial is still clear and easy to read at any angle and in any lighting condition. Despite the amount of activity here, nothing on the dial feels or looks like it's out of place. Everything here has a purpose. The exterior dial ring colorfully displays your hour markers in a dark navy blue squares and the red triangle at the three o'clock position points to your home time indicator which in turn nicely is enhanced by a nice home icon displayed on the interior dial that central surface of the dial is going to feature a few things of course the signing of nomos at the 12 o'clock position also getting a running seconds on that sub dial with a fine grain a circular finish and then also traditional steel pointed hands at the center so just to speak to the creativity on display with this watch. Now you have to understand a little bit about this movement. So this is the DUW 5201. And we'll talk a little bit more about it in detail. But this is technically a GMT movement seen in the Tangente GMT. But has been adapted to some world time functionality. So this isn't a true world time watch because it doesn't allow you to reference all 24 time zones at once. But will allow you to be able to reference a specific time zone across those 24 time zones here. Now that running disc along the outside is going to be adjusted by that pusher on the side of the case that is going to be extending out. A small little other detail here is going to be the one time zone uh, keyed in for Berlin to kind of do a nice little tie into Germany. And this being a Glasuta produced watch so let's just actually talk about how you would set this piece and what do all of the pushers do 
So in a traditional GMT, you will have, of course, your local time and your home time. This is also going to have a disk along the outside that will have that reference point to an additional time zone across the globe. So how this would work, your crown at the three o'clock position will be able to set your home time marked by that indicator on the dial as well. So you would just rotate the crown until you got to your desired position there. The additional function as well with the pusher will then allow you to set the precise reference time zone for that disc along the outside. Pushing it will allow the disc to jump forward and it is quite striking to see. It's uh, very eye-catching and uh, fun to engage with because it does have a nice audible, audible feedback in regards to clicking that button as well. So you would have that set to your precise time. This is also going to initiate the hour hand so it is going to change that time. So then to set the precise local time at your center, you then would engage the push pusher down located at the eight o'clock position with a small tool and that would allow you to go about your day. So with this function, is it a true world time watch? No, it is not, but it does offer some world time functionality and the creativity behind utilizing the movement and uh, how this can be adapted to an actual display that is not overly cluttered despite the activity taking place. You have to give props to Nomos here. So when people look at Nomos watches, I think the first thing that they probably attribute to the brand is going to be their approach to design, which is, of course, going to be rather polarizing. But one area that I don't think has any point of, I would say, uh, combativeness amongst people that even aren't fans of Nomos is going to be the movements that they have housed within their watches. And the one that we have here is a very good one, a higher finish one at that, being one of their DUW calibers, the 5201. So some context on Nomos in their production of manufacturer calibers. So for many years, they were using third-party calibers for some time, and Nomos as a brand is still rather young, being only around 30 years old as a manufacturer, but the strides that they have made in producing their own in-house calibers is quite impressive. Now, the shift into the area of in-house calibers really started with the Alpha Manual caliber being an adaption from the Pazoo 7001 from ETA. As production and supply became more of a concern for an emerging brand like Nomos in order to keep just producing watches at the frequency that they wanted. So they started diving into the world of in-house calibers to really create a vertical structure and manufacturing process. Since then, Nomos has developed an entire lineup of in-house calibers with their DUW series being more of these premium level calibers that they're uh, constructing, also producing their own proprietary escapement known as the Nomos Swing System. And the first movement that actually housed that swing system was this one here, the 5201. Now when flipping this watch over for the first time, this movement does really wow when underneath the light or honestly in any circumstance, because this is, and I think what a lot of people don't give Nomos enough credit for is their actual movement just construction and finishing the finishing of this piece is quite amazing for the price point looking at the bridges you see that Cote de Genève or in this case some glassuta waves across those bridges as well as that hollowed out rotor and then along the outside of the base plate you're going to see some prolage finishing this is being done on both sides even for the watchmaker when they're going ahead and deconstructing this movement for a service so a nice touch there a nice assortment of jewels and blued screws tempered blued to offer a nice array of color across the crown and ratchet wheels also getting a nice wave style finish. Essentially every surface on display is going to have a surface treatment in, in regards to its finishing, making this one very dressed up in its overall appearance. Nomos is also testing this watch internally in terms of specification and standard being tested at six different positions and adjusted accordingly. To add on top of this, this is of course going to also be a manufactured caliber, so produced by Nomos fully in-house and for the price point of around $6,000, rather impressive when you factor in that this is also going to be a complication type of movement with its own proprietary escapement on top to boot. Now in terms of actual specifications, this one's going to be operating at 21,600 vibrations per hour, so three hertz features hacking and hand winding so hacking stopping the second hand when you pull out the crown to the farthest position and has a power reserve of 42 hours all right so now to unpack this watch a little bit look at some points of consideration as we are kind of rounding up this entire review now when looking at nomos in general i like to be pretty straightforward and just say nomos designs are not going to be for everybody and most of their designs are going to be rather minimal in terms of their approach that's why a watch like today with the zurich is a bit different and interesting for those that might not normally look at a brand like Nomos. 
looking at this watch, it's an expression of creativity uh, in many ways, both with the movement itself being housed as a true GMT movement and adapting to some world time complication. This is something that for around $6,000, you're not typically going to be seeing with a manufacturer caliber and adapting it to this type of actual use case of a complication. In addition, the world of complications in Nomos is not something that they typically dabble in. Seeing a world time disc along the outside, the activity that's going to be taking place with that, as well as the home reference time, there are a bunch of different scales and discs here that are going to make this watch way different and separate and deviate from the typical Nomos design, but all in doing so still manages to feel very Nomos in its function. Nomos is one of those brands that understand that creating function and design is not just by putting something there. By not putting something there and utilizing space and area for other elements to breathe allows for a design to really come true. And the Zurich is an example of Nomos taking a more daring approach and adapting this type of ethos to a design of this type. In terms of who this watch is for, is this going to be for the steel sports lover that wants the upped water resistance and things of that sort? Of course not. But if it's for somebody that likes artisanal watchmaking uh, at a pretty reasonable price, getting an in-house manufacturer caliber that is very well finished and can really compete with anybody in the price range in that aspect, while also getting a more eccentric and fun approach to a world time type complication, this is certainly one of the more interesting Nomos watches out there and one probably for those that normally wouldn't look in the direction of the brand. All right, guys. Well, thank you again so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. If you're also interested in purchasing this watch, link in the description to teddybaldosar.com, full authorized dealer of all the brands that we carry. Also, if you have any further questions that were not answered in this video, please do not hesitate to book a time with one of our watch specialists on our website. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I will see you all very soon.